Ne? Mm. <clears throat> so hard to get through. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Where am I? Um, you are talking to Max. Unfortunately, in 30 seconds, there will be interruption in communication, so we'll have to speak to you again. Uh, is it Steve Jobs or Jack Benveniste? I am Jack. Welcome, Jack. Thank you for coming. I am interested in water, and I just had a conversation with a uh, water nymph. That was a, was a nice coincidence. Yeah. Interesting. I'm not sure I believe in water nymphs, but that's all right. I cannot see very well. Are you there? Yeah. Oh, that's right. He said uh, there would be an interruption. Definitely doesn't look like me. No. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. I'm coming back. Yeah. Who is there? <laughs> Sounds like I'm you. still here. You said you would be gone, so I waited. Thank you for waiting. All right. Um, welcome and thank you for connecting. Uh, I'm interested in water and I wonder uh, how did your knowledge about the water change since you crossed to the spirit? Maybe you learned something else. Uh, actually, I was, um, I was right about what I was learning in the water and it was a good, it was a good in interaction. Um, I just did not enjoy trying to get the information through. This is a very interesting place. Um, I didn't, I've learned that, uh, of course, there's much more that I, I've learned, of course, since then, but um, some of it I cannot share because it is not things that you know. Your people do not know these things yet, but um, it, it's difficult to be here. But wh what do you want to know? Um, so in a few years since you have been in the spirit world, how was the time? Uh, what, what, what did you learn? What was your activity? I've learned that I was correct in many of my thought processes, and um, I had made some mistakes as well. But uh, the transference of matter into water, water is a solvent that is universal, of course, and that's always been known. But um, it, it has other properties of holding um, the effects of s the essential effects of matter within it. Not only does it hold the essential facts of matter, but it is, it is a, uh, it can be used as a cloning use for some of these things. Mm -hmm. It can be used to uh, accurately, um, Oh, reduplicate uh, uh, many things. Mm -hmm. uh, I found that uh, due to uh, water's effects on certain matters and certain chemicals, that there are um, there are changes uh, that may be seen by humans or maybe seen by the microscope. But then beyond that, deeper within that thought process, there is a sameness at the very base elements. 
And well, that's very, uh, it's hard for me to, to explain, but um, it's, there is a basicness about everything that is, that comes through quite clearly. Right. Um, and what I learned when I passed is that, um, that I was just scratching the surface of that. And um, it was, it is going to be coming in the future of that, um, many of the things that I said were very, very correct. I was uh, speaking today with another scientist. His name is Valentin. And uh, he pronounced an interesting idea, which is sort of on the surface, but still um, barely touched, that uh, the complexity of the water DNA uh, relationships may be looking too complex from here, but in another multidimensional world, it could be very simple. Yes, that's true. That's absolutely true, yes. Uh, did you, and uh, what else did he say? Uh, it, uh, that's true. that's, that's the question. Really that's the question. elaborate on that too much. There's, he said it quite, you said it quite well, actually. And uh, I, I think that there's really not much to expand on there. Except we don't know the answer. What is so simple on the other side? It, it is simple because it breaks down to basics. You go to the very basics and that is the simple part of it, yes. So the double helix is, uh, you know, it's not that simple on this side. It is a structure which has this kind of molecules. Yes. And, of course, uh, yes. but uh, how can it be simpler on the other side? Would it be like single strand on the other side? Like multidimensionally, what? what is it simplified when it gets on the multidimensional? It becomes more complex. It, it becomes more complex, but the thing is about it, it is not the way you picture it. It's, you see the, the original two-strand DNA is uh, uh, the spiraling ladder. Mm -hmm. But the third, whenever you're adding strands of DNA to that, they do not interlock with that ladder. They go outside of it. Mm -hmm. the, the third strand is like a, a spine of, across the back of it. And then the fourth is another spine until it's enclosed. The more, the more of the strands that you have, the, the more enclosed the original, uh, the original two strands are. They're the basic of all things, but the additional strands come outside and, and actually uh, eventually box in the original two strands, not interlink with it. Are they, are they coming, uh, are they uh, attaching to the double helix in this dimension or? At, in, the, at the top dimension. and the bottom. At the top and the bottom, they do interact, but not in between, because why? Listen to me carefully. The first two DNA strands are the, the, the biology, the, the makeup of the entire body, the time, the clock, all these different things that, um, that you have, that um, your sequence of life, how you grow, how you mature, when you get pubic hair, when you get, um, when you get older, when you start to decline, etc., etc. Now, the extra DNA strands have nothing to do with that original makeup. They have to do with things outside of the original makeup. The activation of different uh, brain parts. They have to do with activation of different things other than their original two strands. So therefore you have, um, yes, you have an attachment of the third stair strand, but it doesn't, it does not have to link through 
the ladder of the original DNA to be effective in opening uh, thought processes, areas of the brain, and uh, releasing chemicals and things of this nature into the body. The first two original strands already have all that re uh, done. And the third strand, fourth strand, fifth strand, sixth strand, as you add them, they are additional informations to the brain. And they work more with the brain than, than actually the activation of body parts. Now, they do link into the understanding of the physiology from the brain. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So they can talk to the original DNA from the brain. Mm -hmm. So you do not need them to be interlocked with the biological time clock of the original DNA, but these are outside of the original extra strands, third and fourth and fifth and sixth, et cetera, as you go into higher dimensional thought processes and species with greater strand activity. They are those that are connected to the brain at the top and the bottom of the, of the, the helix and speak directly to the brain uh, and release the information to the original earlier primitive DNA in a higher source, in a greater uh, way. And also there is more chemical interaction with the third strand. But uh, is this third strand in the physical or is it in uh, uh, beyond physical? It's a, it is, for humans, it is beyond physical. If there is a third strand on a human, it's beyond physical. Uh-huh. So, like, it would be like in the fourth dimension or between dimensions? It would be in the fourth dimension that it would be physical to the fourth dimension, yes. Oh, in the fourth dimension, you would see it in a microscope? Yes. Ah. And the fourth dimension would be where the aliens are? Yes. Some of them. Some of them are in fifth dimension or sixth dimension or whatever you want to call the dimensions. Yes. Um, but, they but, get, people do not understand dimensions at all. So I don't even want to talk about dimensions. They, they are so confusing. They are, uh, to humans, they, they are unexplainable in many ways. But um, the fourth dimension, yes, it's visible. Uh, when you were the, in the body, were you like an alien? Because you seem like to be very lost in about things beyond science. Yes. I was disconnected from third dimensions in many ways. Yes. Uh, well, did, did you like uh, have an alien soul or alien body? How well, I was not aware of it at the time because that was not something people were really interested in if you had hybridization or whatever. But yes, I did have some alien hybridization in me, for sure, for sure. And it was of, um, from Pleiadians. It's, it's from Pleiadians. Were you an alien abductee in any way? No, I don't remember anything like that, no. Did you have, uh, did you have implants? I, I do not know. I will have to check about that. But I do not think so. Uh, did you visit alien ships? No. Uh, did you ever saw a UFO in the sky? I might have, yes. I thought I saw some uh, unidentified objects up there, but I, I never was verified. Uh, tell me, how did you die? Like, did you have enlightenment before the death? What do you mean by that? I mean, I did not have a very big spiritual experience before I die. No. Uh, when I die, yes, I went to, I did have a spiritual experience afterwards. But before that, it, no, nah, nothing. I cannot say that I had anything, uh, a very big spiritual experience before that. No. So your work was picked up by Luc Montagnier. Montagnier. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 
did did uh, did your uh, transfer your your knowledge to him in in in, uh, in large extent? Well, he studied what I studied. He st had my information. Uh -huh. I did not transfer anything to him mentally. I did not even know he was going to pick it up until he did. Um, what happened is this. When I am in the Oversoul now, mm -hmm. I see that I, I want to work on things. I'm not paying attention to Earth too much. Mm -hmm. And so when, when he picked it up, when he picked up my thoughts, my, my mind went back to Earth for a few minutes going, oh, someone is smart enough to pick up my work and use it because there is some very important things that humans can use from it. So that is what I was, uh, so my attention was drawn back when I saw that someone had uh, picked up my work and my attention was drawn to that. Excellent. Um, so if you were to, if I were to continue your work, um, what uh, aspect of your work would you suggest to, to focus on? Um, the, yes, oh, wonderful. If you are going to do that, that's wonderful. But um, I would, the, the aspects of um, how water maintains uh, its basic properties, even with the insertion of many different things. And it, it also um, can be a source of, oh, what is the word? What is the word? Um, you will be able to study the elements in a different way in water. Uh, meaning that when uh, you put something in water, it will have some aspects of that element that stays in the water and you will be able to study it from a different sense ability from when it was in the uh, when it was in original form because it goes into its basic form there and perhaps you will see something new and different i just wonder if um Yes, your uh, work can be expand, expanded on the work on the brain somehow. Um, well, that is an interesting transference. I, I'm trying to see that in my mind. Yes, I, I imagine it could in some ways. Yes. Oh, oh yes. Okay. Um, if you were to... Um, take interesting, you mean portions of the brain and put them in water? I was thinking about more like interacting with consciousness of the brain because the brain, okay. Oh, yes. Okay, there, is a, there was an experiment which impressed me a lot. Uh, they took a, a electricity measurement uh, of the brain, electro electroencephalogram machine. So basically- Yes, yes. Electroencephalography machine. And they put it, uh, look, when you put it on human uh, and you scare a human, then uh, there is a peak of activity which is characteristic for a human. Yeah. When you put it on a plant, uh, you can uh, threaten a plant or harm a plant, and the plant and the plants around would be uh, showing the same electri electric activity. And then what they did, they put it on a on a jelly, like huge piece of a jelly water. It's like uh, artificial water plus uh, gelatin, I guess. And it also showed that activity. So it looks like uh, the main thinking part of the brain, at least the electrical part of the thinking brain is water. So I wonder if that is somehow related to your research. Well, yes, of course, water is a conductor, of course, but, and, and it does have, comp and water is alive in, in, in some ways, yes. Yeah, that's so my point. Get yes. a reaction for any, uh, the same kind of reaction to anything that has water involved with it, because water will react um, like 
uh, it is afraid or that it it has emotion. Yes. So why would it do so? Is there something uh, beyond the water, or higher, higher dimensional, which is well, the, the water? Has, the water is conscious in a way. Yes. But You're the consciousness out. is uh, beyond the third dimension, obviously. It's, it's no, it is in third dimension as well. Once you put the um, the uh, the test on it, do you not see the reaction in third dimension? I do. You do. You see that reaction in third dimension, and so you must find out that you must know that the water as a whole is a collective is a consciousness. And so therefore it, it, as you separate water out and into a glass of water, even if you use a glass of water as your test, you will find a, that there is a consciousness in the water there. Right. Um, how can it be used for the medicine? How can you use the electricity or the water? Uh, how do we use that understanding for to treat uh, mental problems? You treat the water for mental problems. You come to the water and you... you um, there are many different ways to uh, charge water. You can charge it with ions, you can charge it with different things, but if you charge it with healing energy, charge it with a healing modality, charge it with um, thoughts, a positive thoughts of healing that can be useful to humans. Do you not think it couldn't, could not help? It will, yes. Mm -hmm. um, my main uh, focus, yeah, the main focus of, go ahead. The, Whenever you do something with healing modality, whatever, you must understand that the energy that you have given it is only a small amount of energy that it can handle. It cannot really hold too much energy. So if, if the water was able to hold a greater charge of healing energy, it could actually heal the, the difficulties that you were giving it but it is only a, like a small medication if you do it that way. Does, do you understand that? Uh, the advantage of your approach was it was computerized. It was, you were able to uh, separate it from, uh, from the human and uh, basically bring it into a computer. Yes. And that was a great breakthrough. And also just the ability to make it independent of the healer, basically, because there is a, oh, lot yeah. we can, a lot we can do with our consciousness just using the healing, healing approach, but uh, much uh, more interesting would be to analyze and... Uh, well, I was, I was just saying it that way because um, more people can understand it a little better that way, I think. But right. yes, putting it through the computer, yes. Yeah, as a scientist, I'm interested in a reductionist approach. I want to reduce it to, to elements. And, and um, my, my main approach is to use your, your, uh, your knowledge to uh, decipher the genome. Somehow, maybe the understanding of the water uh, could help uh, uh, deciphering the genome and understanding how I mean, it's too complex. The genome is too complex. So looking at the, uh, looking at their DNA water interactions, we might be able to simplify it to a simple explanation. So that's the goal. Yes. Let me tell you one thing before I go, because I must go. All right. You must see where the reactions happen in the genome. genome. I cannot see it. You must see where the re reactions are because that is the answer to the question. You see, there's reactions all over, but they're specified when working with specific things. Does that make sense? No. Uh, did you say chemical reactions or some, some other reactions? The, the reactions of the water in the geode. 
uh, reactions of water and DNA, how do they interact? Yeah, that's, the, that's what my question to you. How do they interact? Yes, exactly. Watch where the reactions are in the exact places where you're giving, uh, yeah. Here is a piece of DNA, it's yeah. a, a slice. So the water stays here and yeah. here. Correct. And which one is reacting? That we don't know. Which water is reacting? Are they both reacting? Is one reacting? Is the other reacting? Where right. is your reactions in the water? Right. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And then if you know where they are, where the reactions are, this will give you a clue to where they're going. Okay. Thank you. Ah. Ah. All right. I didn't explain that well, but it's all right. Thank you. I got it. I uh, I will talk again maybe someday. Yeah, yeah. Come again. We'll have more discussion. Wonderful to meet you. And um, uh, as a spirit, you are entitled. Of course, you always can uh, come to me in my meditations and talk to me yes. directly. You're welcome to do it. It would be I'm nice to come if you are actually interested in my methods and thought processes. Uh, I will come. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, you're invited. Thank you. Good day. Good day.